Welcome to Fresh Catholic, a podcast for those who are converting, reverting, or simply want a fresh perspective of the Catholic faith to help them to open their hearts and minds to become closer to the love and goodness of Christ. My daily prayer is that I will be a bright light to others, to be filled with the love and light of Christ, so that when people look at me, they see Him radiating out from me for His glory. Hello and welcome. I'm Lori Balderas, and I'm so happy you're here. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I know it's a very busy time of year, so I appreciate you setting aside time to have a listen. I'm also very appreciative to the people who are spreading the word about Fresh Catholic. Yay, I'm so grateful to all of you. Speaking of spreading the word, have you had a chance to go to our website, freshcatholic.com, or YouTube to check out Fresh Catholic Courses with Educator Charles Merritt. In this first series, Pivotal Prayers, Charles explores and teaches about two foundational Catholic prayers, the Hail Mary and the Our Father. It's fascinating to hear Charles explain and teach why we pray these prayers and what they mean. And we are in production and have been filming the next series on sin. So go check out the trailer. That's going to be a good one. I I can feel it in my bones. Also, we are stepping it up in our course series with Charles, and we will be offering a downloadable book that expands on his lessons. What? Wow. It will have biblical references and more. What a great addition to the series we're doing. It's coming soon, so keep a lookout. While you're at our website, freshcatholic.com, check out Fresh Catholic Comics, our blog, the podcast, our exclusive faith-based online store with exclusive Fresh Catholic merch. And not all of it says Fresh Catholic, even though those are my favorite, but there's many things that you could have for your house or for yourself or for your friends and family. We also have Fresh Catholic Coffee, 17 flavors, roasted and shipped on the same day. Any purchase you make will help support the Fresh Catholic ministry, as will our Patreon, sponsorships, advertising, any of those things will help. So please consider it. We would be so grateful. Thanks so much to all of you who are supporting the weekly podcast and also Fresh Catholic Daily, the daily readings, by listening, subscribing, rating with five stars, and reviewing. And thanks to my followers on Instagram and Facebook. If you're not already following, please do. I do little short videos every day. So go check that out at Fresh Catholic. And now, welcome, Simon Balderas. Hey, Lauren. Hey, Simon. I know you are fried today because you have been filming the Sin series with Charles Merritt. Yeah, it's going really well. That's what you were doing today. Yeah. I had to get out of here because I, you know, I want to save it. I want to <laughs> hear it like everybody else. Yeah, it's really fascinating. Charles is doing a great job. I'm learning a lot, and it's solidifying a lot of things that um, I've already known. And the way that he puts it is... Such a great and clear way to understand um, these concepts of sin and how we got to where we're at and what to do about it and how to combat it and so forth. So it's been uh, it's been really good. He's such an amazing teacher. He is. He really is. I feel so blessed that we you know that God brought us together to do this because, like we've said before maybe we haven't said it out loud i know we've said it to each other and him but he is teaching a group of people at our church but the fact that now we're in 53 countries fyi Mm -hmm. 53 countries and like almost a thousand cities in the united states imagine how many people can be benefiting from his knowledge right and so i'm just thrilled to bits that he a lot you know he's aligning with us and we're able to, you know, get his name out there and get his courses out there. I just, you know, the more people we can help, the more people we can draw to Christ. That's the goal here. 
And so I just, I'm, I'm so excited to yeah, see I, where it goes. I'm really excited. I'm really pleased at how he presents things. And I listen and read a lot of things. And just the clarity alone as to how he puts things. And you immediately draw the lines to how it affects your own life. So I feel like his real world examples are just really powerful and make a lot of sense. Right. So if you haven't checked those out yet, please do. And then uh, the Sin series is coming coming up quick. Yeah, it's coming quick here. Yeah. So that's exciting. Okay. So a couple things I want to talk about today. You know me. You know that I get these these ideas from the Holy Spirit about what to do the episodes on. And, and I know it's somewhat frustrating to you because I, I switch around a lot. I have these things where I'll go, we're going to do the episode on this subject, and then I can <laughs> switch it up. I wouldn't say it's frustrating, but it's definitely a moving target. And I know that you really rely on the Holy Spirit for the inspiration, which, you know, I just let go. There's nothing I can do to, I don't want to fight that off. I just um, often feel a little unprepared because I just kind of have to wing it once you get the final inspiration and you start digging in. Right. Um, so, So one of the things I wanted to say is, that being said, sometimes I'll get an idea and I'll have a plan, haha, <laughs> plan, and God says, ha ha, Lori, you're so funny. Um, I had a plan for a couple of episodes in May and they fell through, which was unfortunate. It's not to say they won't happen later, but I had a, an idea for May that was going to be Mother Month, you know, Mother, Women, the Blessed Mother. I had these th- this vision of, of May, because that's what I think about in May, those those things. And then I always think June is like Father's Day, Father's Men, St. Joseph, that, that sort of theme for the month, you know? Mm-hmm. So that being said, I had to kind of shift a little bit about what we were going to do this episode on because my one idea fell through. And... After last week's episode with Carolyn Curtis, if you if you haven't heard that, go back and listen to that. She and I were talking about, you know, raising a, a traditional family in an untraditional world. The world's becoming less and less traditional as we're going along here. And, you know, to to have a traditional family, to try to have your morals and ethics intact and have your eye on the Lord and have your family's feet on that solid foundation, we're living in a world where that's not the case right now. So I've gotten a lot of great feedback about her episode. I think she's an inspiration. I think there are a lot of families that are living the way her family is, but it's definitely shifting away from that more traditional family. And and in my opinion, in my view, it's not working in the world that that people are are kind of just winging it And I just don't know that it's working super great. Mm -hmm. I do agree with you that things are definitely changing and all of these things are happening. And I do kind of want to put out there a couple of things. One is because I am personally immersed in technology. I'm constantly using creative software that's constantly changing. Um, I am immersed in AI. I use AI quite a bit in what I do. It does help me multitask. And... There's this unstoppable wave of technology that is coming or that is already here. I don't want to say that these things are destroying traditional values, but they're certainly putting them at risk. It is here. It is growing. I think just people should keep that kind of in mind when we're talking about what you want to talk about, these traditional roles and family, because how do we adjust to that? How do we protect ourselves against this emerging technology? And it's not just technology, but that's definitely a huge driving force. I mean, there's going to be autonomous AI driven robots in four years, and they're going to look like human beings. Like, what are we going to do with that? They're going to be smarter, stronger, faster than us. Right. You know, so how do you deal with that on a moral level, on a traditional level? Things are definitely in the future are not going to be quote unquote traditional. We'll be right back. Step into the world of Edges and Echoes, the revolutionary podcast that redefines conversations. Eager to broaden your perspectives? Each episode of Edges and Echoes features cutting edge, AI generated dialogues between fictional characters like an oil tycoon debating a climate warrior or a tech pioneer clashing with a digital doubter. 
Join us on Edges and Echoes as we delve into hot-button issues from healthcare to the ethics of modern technology. It's more than just a discussion. It's a journey into the heart of today's most pressing debates. Why just listen to one side when you can experience both? Click the link to subscribe. Right. And I do think it takes a lot of effort, but worthwhile effort. And that's why when Carolyn, you know, she she had these, you know, put the phone down, don't watch the news, have these these traditions that your family is doing. Like in her family, you know, they have no technology Sunday. Her boys are limited on, you know, um, all sorts of things that that most kids are just having free reign on today. And not just children, but everybody. It's like you got to have limits on stuff. You can't just have everything big free for all and everybody can do whatever they want, whenever they want. And that's the world we're living in right now. Instantaneous. I got to have food right now. I need it delivered to my door. I want the satisfaction of doing whatever and getting the instant gratification, all those things. Mm. So we have to slow it down. Yep. It's like this is a cart rolling down a hill. And we got to pull the reins in. Yeah, I agree with that. I, we definitely need to try to slow things down within the family and, and take these pauses that Carolyn was doing with her kids. Again, I want to say her episode got a lot of really good positive feedback because I think people are looking for solutions to this cart rolling down the hill. You know, I think people need help, inspiration. I think they need to know, oh, I can tell my child no. Oh, I can limit their device usage. Oh, I can do that as a parent. Anyway, I I I feel really good about that episode because I I do think it it gave me some hope that, you know, again, her family isn't the only family doing that, but I really appreciated her coming to talk about it so that it would encourage other families. She gave some really good ideas. She gave some really good tips. Right. And I think we're looking for that right now. So I really appreciate that episode. And so one of the reasons I wanted to do this episode, and I'm going to say a couple things, but I'm also going to put little breadcrumbs out because I will be having an episode with Charles Merritt coming up really soon here for the month of June. And we're going to be talking in that episode about men and about, you know, men are getting a bad rap. And, and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. And there's this, you know, toxic masculinity. Men are being bashed, especially white men. And it's just, it's blown up into this big thing. So Charles and I are going to really, we're going to get deeper into that subject. But I'm going to touch on a couple things today about men. But we're really, Charles and I are really going to dive deep into that. The other episode I'm going to want to do really soon here and it has to do with this episode, but I'm going to go in more deeply, is talking about the dating world today, specifically Catholics who w- would like to date, who would like to find a, a spouse, who would like to have a sacramental marriage, and how it's going out there in the world, and how it's different now. And I would like to have a couple of guests that are struggling with this. I would like a man and a woman to come. So (laughs) hit me up if you're uh, interested in being a guest on my show with that subject matter, because we're going to talk about a few of these things today, but I want to dive deeper into those on other episodes coming up. So I know you listen to a lot of different podcasts and you're very in tune to different things going on in the world. And what I've really been enjoying is I listen to Daily Wire, which is it's a series of podcasts. It's a whole platform. And there's Catholic conservatives on there, such as Michael Knowles. I really find him to be very interesting because he has a pulse on the Catholic faith because he's a devout Catholic. And so it helps me to realize that not everything is is according to the left. Not everything is liberal. They like to make us think that in the world, but that's really not true. And it gives me some safety and security knowing that I can go to Daily Wire and hear like actual news and actual, you know, um, what's going on in the world with a maybe more 
conservative Christian Catholic view. Yeah, and I know that some of the things that we've talked about, it assures you, at least it seems like it does, that traditional values are actually still alive and well and people right. want to have those. And I think that's the only place I'm seeing it, to be honest with you, except in our church, when I go to church. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I'm at our church, I see traditional people there and I feel so safe and secure at our church. Like I've said that before, but when I'm there on that property, I feel like I'm just wrapped in bubble wrap there. I know that's maybe not the best way to say it, but I just feel like I'm with people where I feel secure. When I'm listening to Daily Wire, it, it's helping me to realize that there are people in the world that do have traditions happening, that are interested in marriage, that are interested in what God wants, that are interested in morals and ethics. It helps me mm -hmm. because if I wasn't listening to that, I'm not able to hear it anywhere else. There's, I can't find another place that's satisfying that for me. Yeah. I know most news is kind of a downer and this seems like it's hopeful to you. <laughs> it's hopeful to yeah. me. And so anyway, it's not that this is a commercial for Daily Wire, but it's, I'm just trying to say that sometimes that's where I get my questions or my things I'm interested in. I mean, the Holy Spirit definitely guides me to my episodes, but it makes me question things out in the world or you know, like think, yeah, why aren't we doing more of this or more of that? Yeah. So, and the one thing that I noticed is that the news that I kind of absorb through going to the gym and seeing what's on the 45 television screens or just turning on the radio when I'm driving and that sort of thing. So I do hear news just sort of inadvertently and it's really sort of one-sided news. So sure. I think that what you're ex describing and what I can understand, and I have listened to the Daily Wire, is that it's it gives you a balance. Yeah. It actually presents a sort of different perspective, and I think that's important. Because I feel like, I, again, it, it's the only thing that I have heard where I go, oh, you mean that there's an, yeah, there's another side to this story? Because that's not what you're hearing now in the in the media. Right. You're get, You're being given one thing, and this is like, they'll say, well, this is a lie. One of them was about Pope Francis. This there, there was this interview he did on 60 Minutes just recently, and of course he was misquoted, and of course they took it out of context, they being the left media, took it out of context. But then when you actually hear Michael Knowles went through it, he's very devout Catholic, and he, you know, he's he's saying, here's the actual question, here's what Pope Francis answered, and then Michael Knowles says, so... They totally misrepresented it, the left. That's not good because then everybody thinks that that's just the truth, but right. there is the balance of mm -hmm. it. So anyway, it's not, again, not that this is a commercial. It's just I'm I'm getting ready to say that this is where I got the idea for this particular episode. Coming off of the heels of the Carolyn Curtis episode, getting ready to do the episode about men with Charles. This is the in-between. And... I don't know if y'all listen to the big hoopla going on about Harrison Butker, who is the, he's on the Kansas City Chiefs, and he went to do a commencement speech at a Catholic university to a bunch of Catholics. He's devout Catholic. He did a beautiful commencement speech, and it is being pulverized by the left. He's being attacked. He has a petition out where they want him fired from his job. Everybody's all up in arms about this. And actually, everything he said was beautiful and wonderful and true. And it was about marriage and it was about how much he loves his wife and values his wife, that she's a stay-at-home mom. And he was taking on all sorts of things. He really went for it. He really went for it. Okay. And it was a 20-minute speech. And there's two minutes about women in there. And boy, the women are in a frenzy over this because, of course, they're not really listening to what he's saying. They've, they've gone off the deep end about this. And what I really appreciate is, so far, while we're recording this, he hasn't backed down. He's okay. sticking to his guns. Like I said, that's one of my new favorite statements. 
sticking to his guns. He's not backing down and apologizing for his commencement speech at a Catholic university that he was invited to, talking to Catholics about their future, not saying anything mean and hateful, but he was being very firm. He took on the president, you know, the president who claims to be Catholic, who is for abortion, who's for transgenderism, who's for all these things. He took that on. He took on women's issues. He took on all these things, but he was very calm. He was very clear. He wasn't attacking. He was being factual. He was mm -hmm. being honest. Mm -hmm. And boy, is he getting it. But what it what it really reminded me of, and and I and Charles and I will talk more about that that commencement speech because I think that deserves a great deal of time to talk about. And I'm very proud of of him for speaking out in the way he did. I, he wasn't even speaking out. He was doing a commencement speech. Good for him that he was talking about things that he felt good and passionate about and and talking about how much he loves his wife and values his wife. It really made me think about, again, our traditional families. And then this thing that I was talking about with Carolyn, trad wives, this, this trad wife, I don't even want to call it a trend, but it's a trend, where people have drifted away from traditional families, from traditional husband-wife roles. And they, these people that did that, thought it was the greatest thing ever. But now the pendulum is drifting back. Okay, it's swinging back. And people are now starting to desire traditional families. Okay. They're realizing, oh, maybe this isn't working. Mm. Maybe this way that we've been doing things isn't really working in the long run. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really interesting because I feel like a lot of people are being brainwashed. A lot of people are being told, you want to be single. You don't need a man. You don't need, you know, you, what do you want to be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen? What you want to listen to a man? What you, you want to be sub, you, you don't want to be submissive to a man. Mm -hmm. You don't need him. You can have a baby without him. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's what they're being told. Mm -hmm. And these, these people are the ones that are getting upset at Harrison Butker mm -hmm. because of what he said. And that's interesting to me because to me, I think that it, you don't have to like what he says, but he certainly has the right to say what he wants to say, right? Absolutely. I mean, to, to, to shut him down and say he should be fired, that's unfair. This is, I mean, we live in America, I think, right? I mean, he he has the right of, it's the First Amendment. We need, He has the right of free speech, right? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, well, there's a lot of things that in this, in this whole world, and especially in the United States, that people don't like, and they don't have to. And they can say what they want, too. And that's the beauty of living here. Well, and that's what, what is also really interesting is even very, very strong liberals like Whoopi Goldberg, Bill Maher, they both have spoken out and said he he should be able to say what he wants to say. Mm -hmm. You don't have to listen to it. Right. First okay. of all, he wasn't talking to the masses. He was talking to a Catholic university to right. a bunch of Catholics mm -hmm. that he was invited to. So he can say his commencement speech. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it has to do with how come people can say whatever they want about transgenderism, mm -hmm. about abortion, you know, the, being pro-choice. Yeah. How, how come they can do that? But but he can't talk about traditional roles. Right. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% certain that those same people walked in to an Amish prayer group Bible study, they would it would blow their minds, and they would try to abolish that too. Right. So it's just it's kind of ridiculous. It's out of control. I don't know. I think it seems like people are like losing their intellectual abilities these days. Well, and that's that's the thing that I again I want to talk about. Again, I'm I'm considering this Women's Month, Mother Month, and I'm sad for women. I don't know what makes them think that if they do that, they disappear, mm. that they become less than. I don't know who's poisoning their their brains mm -hmm. with this. I, 
I do think that those people, and I hate to talk about those people or at least sort of generalized groups, but I feel like there are groups that um, sense a threat to themselves as an individual. For example, if you are a woman who enjoys cooking, for example, they automatically... um, relate that to a man who insists that his wife or his significant other is designated to the kitchen. And that's not necessarily true, but they have a fear about it. They feel like they're being forced to do that. And that's just so weird to me. Well, and also I, this is, this is something I want to say about, you know, being married, having roles, right? Like the back in the day, the traditional roles were, you know, the husband went to work, the wife stayed home with the children and took care of the household, right? Mm-hmm. And she did do a lot of the work around the house. He didn't. That that was back in the day. He did work outside and, and she was inside taking care of the house and the children, right? Mm-hmm. And then it morphed into women started working outside the home. You know, that became a thing. Now, I'm not against women working. I'm not against moms working or people working. I'm not. But I'm also not against people staying home if that's what they choose to do. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's up to anybody else to say the people that work are bad, the moms that stay home are bad. There should be no shame Mm -hmm. in either. All right? And I feel like right around the time like women started working and there became the children... Then that morphed into there was an issue with the children because there was more latchkey kids. Right. Okay. There was more other people had to come take care of the children or the children were left home and taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. That trend happened. Mm -hmm. So that certainly wasn't happening back in the day, Mm -hmm. back in the olden days. Mm -hmm. Mom mom or nanny was home. Okay. Or they lived with their family. Mm Mm-hmm. With like grandma and grandpa, okay? okay? Mm-hmm. So then it morphs into, you know, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I I don't think I am. So right around the time, you know, women started working, there became more divorces. There became, you know, then it's a separate household, all right? right. So you have to notice that that's like back in the olden days, people weren't getting divorced all the time. Mm-hmm. It was rare. And now it's rare if you stay married, like I've said in other episodes. So... What's interesting is this old time traditional family is not there's there's that's just not very common these days. Mm -hmm. So somewhere somewhere in that phase, I think it became where there is this stigma of the man does this, the woman does this, Mm -hmm. whatever they have their their, you know, when you think about the old stereotypical family, right? Mm hmm. So I think it's gone way too far the other direction. And now it's, I think it's mainly women who say, I don't need a man. I don't, you rarely hear a man saying, I don't need a woman. It's more the women who, you know, have have this, whatever's gone on this brainwashing thing. Mm -hmm. So I don't see why you can't be in a marriage and decide for your own family how that looks, mm-hmm. but still be intact. Right. Okay. So, so first of all, I've never taken offense. Now, now this is my personal story. I'm not saying that everybody should do what I do, but I'm saying when I was married before, there was definitely John worked outside the home. He did the yard work. He did stereotypical man husband things. And I was a stay at home mom who took care of the children and the inside of the house. Okay. And it worked great for us. I felt so fulfilled and so worthwhile and so supported in that role. I never felt like a slave to him or lower than him. I felt like in certain things we were not, we were equal, but he was definitely the head of the household. But I was head of my part Uh and he was the head of his. And then we were a team. Right. And and I felt really valued and good about that. Yeah. So even though you guys had these traditional roles, the work that needed to happen within the family was 
equally divided. And I'm saying that word purposely equally divided because equality is really what people are up in arms about. They think right. that some jobs are lesser than others. Like ra staying at home and raising a child isn't as important as working and having a high power job. Like it's not as important, but it actually pro probably is even more important. It's huge. And you know, when you say like back in the day, I, I can't help but think of, I need to grab onto something. So I'm just kind of thinking of like a timeline mm -hmm. as to like how and when everything fall apart. And really, you know, when you say back in the day, I think of like immediately kind of like the fifties, like that was real traditional and be, and before that. So mm -hmm. the fifties right. before, yes. and then I think, okay, then comes the advent of the civil rights movement and the women's movement, all that kind of stuff. And a lot of that was important to have to happen. You know, not just for men and women, but for other races. Mm -hmm. And there was, you know, Martin Luther King and all that. So how important all that stuff is. Mm -hmm. But it did go to the extreme, mm -hmm. you know, and it's gone so to the extreme. This pendulum that you're talking about, it really did. Everybody was really seeking equality. And when they when you say equality, I mean, exact equality. And even today, it's even gone to the extreme where a woman can a man can participate in women's sports, for example, mm -hmm. if they're transgender and they just beat every woman in their class. Right. You know, so there's that's not equality. That's unfair. Right. You know, so I, I can't help but kind of like I just need a frame of reference. And that's well, I agree with I would say anything, you know, before 1960 was traditional. And then after that, not so much. Mm. And. So what I was what I was saying is, you know, I I definitely had a traditional marriage and I felt good in it though. I I felt really good and valued and yeah, my job was like I know this for a fact cuz I we, after my accident we were in a lawsuit and we were trying to, you know, based on the accident, we, they were trying to figure out what I was worth. Okay? Mm -hmm. And so they they had me list all my jobs that I did in the house. Right. Oh. And if somebody would come in and do those jobs, how much they would get paid. Oh, wow. Okay. Hmm. So it was very fat. Well, cause I was suing a multi million dollar company. So they were very nitpicky about this uh, hmm. subject, but it was very fascinating because you know, how much does a dishwasher cost? How much does a, you know, all these different jobs that I was doing that. So they got 15 jobs is what they came up with. Hmm. Huh. So that was very interesting, but I did feel valued. Then when you and I, you and I have a different marriage, okay? Mm -hmm. So because, you know, we don't have, like, we're not raising a bunch of kids <laughs> at the same time. You know, we're older mm -hmm. and everything. And I feel like, I don't think we have, like, traditional roles. You know what I mean? Like, I don't cook all the meals. Cl I do clean. Yeah. I am the cleaner. But... I just, I feel like we have a different dynamic because John and I were raising children and we were in that phase. You and I, though, I feel like we're equal in some things, but you're definitely the head of the household. Contrary to what people think, it's you, you're the one that makes all the final decisions. I don't. I know you'd often default, but I, I know what you're saying. And I do think that we, are, I want to just call it, not, it has nothing to do with equality. It's just unorthodox because I am a little bit of a obtuse person. I mean, I'm more creative than I am um, anything else. So that kind of makes me a little obtuse. And when you default and say, you know, you often do this, especially on big decisions. Well, it's all, you know, it's ultimately your decision, Simon, which I, I really, um, it's, it, it, it's okay but um, it definitely, I definitely feel, <laughs> I don't want to say the burden, but it's, it's, it's a little scary for me because I haven't always been in charge of my own household, actually, mm -hmm. you know, or made the final decision. I've always been kind of, I don't want to say pushed around, but a pushover. How's that? Mm -hmm. Anyway, I, I do really value marriage. I really value relationships. I believe and it's a fact, God put man and woman on the earth to be together. We're not meant to be alone. We're meant to be together. We're meant to match up, procreate, be together, 
that that's that was God's plan. Mm-hmm. Again, we're mucking it up. The world's mucking it up. And that women, for whatever reason, this is the part I feel is so sad. If if they are being told or brainwashed into thinking that if they're with a man, they're going to be less than. I don't believe that for a single second. Mm-hmm. I believe that we're meant to be together. You got to find who that person is. And you have to be willing and open to find that person. And then when you're together, you have to compromise. Uh-huh. And and I think people think the word compromise is a bad word. And it's not. Uh-huh. It can't always be about you. Right. It can't uh-huh. always be about what you want. Uh-huh. And if you don't, and I'm not yelling at you, Simon Baldaris, uh-huh. you out in the world, if you don't get your way, it's okay. Uh-huh. When you get married, you become one, right? You're two people, you become one. Mm -hmm. And you're willing the good of the other. So you want to be sure when you get married in a sacramental marriage, you're with that person, you want the best for them, they want the best for you, you're going to be a team in the world Mm -hmm. and in your faith and in everything, and you will be equal in, in much of it. But you also, the main thing is you're complementing each other. Right. You are you are made to complement each other. And I don't mean, gosh, you're good looking, Simon Balderas. I mean, you are meant to balance each other. Right. You're meant to help each other. Mm-hmm. You're meant to use your gifts. So I think back in the day when people had a stereotypical vision of something, it's more like, let's say there's days where you want to cook. Right. Mm -hmm. And cooking back in the day was was a stereotypical female thing to do. Right. That's not how it is so much anymore. Mm -hmm. And I celebrate that when men want to cook. Great. Mm -hmm. That's great. So some days you cook, some days I cook. As long as the task is being done Mm -hmm. and we're doing it to keep each other going and 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 all that. Great. Mm hmm. It, it shouldn't be like, well, you have to do this and I'm, you know, and it's squashing you down. Right. That's not what it's about. No, it's not. And I do think that I know how we sort of divide up things that need to be done and it's done without pretense. And I think a big key and something that I always strive to do is to, when you're working with a partner, to be as selfless as possible. Because the more selfish you are, the more that you are going to get angry at people like Harrison Butker when he's talking about traditional Mm -hmm. values. He's not saying, you know, men should have more privilege than women. No. Or dominate women. Right. No. It's about dividing up tasks and, and things that need to be done within the family. And traditional ones fit probably better within a Catholic family. Right. And I, and I also feel like, Again, back to his his speech, he was saying how his wife really values being a wife and mother. He really values her being a wife and mother. Well, what a horrible thing for him to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, people. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing for him to say. He's supporting his wife. He's happy she's doing that. And you know what's going to happen when whichever parent stays home. I don't care if the mom stays home or the dad stays home. Mm -hmm. Whoever's going to stay home with the children. Mm-hmm. and value the children and make sure the children are taken care of. It's actually a short period of time. Now I know when you have a bunch of kids, it kind of goes on for years. I mean, I was home with my children for a long time, mm-hmm. but that is was the best decision I ever made. And my daughter and daughter-in-law are doing that best decision. Mm-hmm. I totally support it because they're home with their children. Mm-hmm. They're making sure their children's needs are being met. They're focused on their children. And someday those kids are going to be out and about yeah. in the world. So I think a traditional family, when I say that, is like mom and dad are together. Mm-hmm. Mom and dad live under the same roof. Mom and dad are taking care of the children, however that looks. Mm-hmm. I, I know I told you a story about when my brother was married years and years ago and his son, who's now I think 40, good Lord, when he was a little boy, my brother's wife was a nurse. So she's the one that went to work and my brother stayed home with his son. Mm-hmm. Great. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean mommy always has to yeah. stay home. It's it. So you can kind of work that however that works in your own yeah. home. 
I think the interesting thing about that, especially the example that you said, is they agreed to do this, right? They agreed together to do this. So what if we were raising children, young children, and I dictated, you must do this, and that's final. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would go over very well. No. So it's because it's not done out of love. Right. It's done out of some kind of pretense. Right. Right. So I think, again, that maybe the the old school way before the 60s was, I would imagine, maybe more domineering. I, I'm not I'm not saying it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It's how people were back then. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that's why the pendulum swung the other way, because it was maybe too intense. I agree with that. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't have my head in well, the sand. Well, it was sand. dictated, and you couldn't get out of that role. It was just, right. that's it. It was kind yeah, of. There was no other choice. Right. It was the social caste system. As right. Well as, yeah. But now, I think now that it's swinging back, okay, and people are interested in some more traditional roles, now we can kind of do it, like you're saying, in a different way. Where, like, for example, I love to clean. I love to do laundry. I love to clean. I love it. Mm-hmm. I don't like it if somebody else does that. Mm. I, I do not like it. I put a stop to it. I want to do it. I've always been like that. Mm-hmm. And I take offense to it. <laughs> oh, I know. I, mean, I don't know how many times I, I could count how many times I've been in the kitchen and I made a mess and start cleaning. cleaning. And you say, you walk in, you say, just leave it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I appreciate. Cause... Well, I think one of my favorite things when we first got together, we weren't even married yet. And I remember... You know, you're El Diablo in the kitchen. You're you're a lunatic in the kitchen. You, there's stuff everywhere. Mm. And I remember my, I said to my daughter, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know about this guy. You know, like he's he's crazy in the kitchen. She goes, it's a good thing you love to clean, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we have that agreement. So I don't feel like you're saying to me, well, get in there and clean the kitchen. Right. You know, or you better clean the house. The place is a disaster. You, you're not <laughs> like that, you know. But I mean, you have to to be able to talk and negotiate these things with your spouse. Mm. You have to like figure out. I mean, there there can be more interaction. There can be some customizing of your family, mm. but it's your family to do that in. Right. So I think my personal opinion, just from hearing what's going on in the world, is I think that women are being told one thing, but it's actually a detriment to them. Where the thing that I'm wondering about, I'm curious about, that I'm noticing, maybe I'm wrong, but I do feel like women think if they're with a man, they can't be strong, they can't be individual, they can't be who they are. And when I say individual, they can't be be themselves. Mm -hmm. I, I... I think they're being lied to when they feel that if oh if I'm in a, if I'm a man then he's going to want me to be this way and I have to do it. Well, I think that's ridiculous. Right. And I think you have to figure out how you can find your partner out there. Who who is it? Who's it going to be? He's out he or she is out there somewhere. Mm-hmm. God's created somebody for you. Yeah. And you have to find your way to each other. Right. And then when you do you do have to come at it with love, kindness, openness. Yeah. Now, I know there's a lot of hurt people out there, and they've been hurt by other people, and they're wary, and they're on guard. And I understand that, and I'm not discounting that. Yeah. And I don't want to be insensitive to people that have had issues with men, and maybe they've really hurt them. But that's not all men. I know some men have been hurt by women. That's not all women. You know, try to find your your way to the person you're meant to be. Yeah, with. and I, well, in in finding the way, I do think it's super important as early on as you possibly can to start comparing your values and what how you prioritize things because if they don't match, it's going to be a problem later on. Right. So you should know that as soon as possible. Right. And you know, and that brings up another thing about courtship. If you're going to be courting somebody and you start firing off these questions about their values and their 
they're kind of turned off. Be serious about connecting with somebody. Because if you're just messing around and you're not that serious and you don't like this person as traditional values, then you need to part ways. Right. See. And and I agree with that where I agree a hundred percent early on. Be yourself. Be yourself. Don't go in pretending to be something you're not, because you can't keep that up. And it's not that you have to sit there and fire off a bunch of questions, but yes, early on, figure out. Like I remember one time I had just gotten out of my first marriage to the person who was addicted to drugs and who was beating me. And I had this guy at work, he wanted to go out with me and he happened to be into drugs. And I said, now, you know, Dan, I really like you as a friend, but I just got out of a marriage because some, he was a drug addict. Why would I want to start dating you? Mm-hmm. Not to be mean to you, but why would I do that? Mm-hmm. And he's all, well, <laughs> you know, he wasn't willing to give up mm-hmm. what he was doing. So right. I wasn't asking him to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's good to figure out early on, like you say, is this going to work? You know, and be honest yeah. with, with people. Don't, don't pretend to be something you're not mm-hmm. because it'll come out later. Yeah. And that's a problem. And speaking of courtship, mm-hmm. so this is a thing too, that, that people aren't able to court these days. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to figure out where am I supposed to find my spouse? Mm-hmm. Where am I supposed to find my person? Right. It's And what I was listening to this week on Daily Wire, they were talking about back in the old days, your families generally would set you up with somebody. You lived in a small area, so you knew everybody. It's kind of like in Ojai, where we've raised, you know, been raised. Mm-hmm. So we've said in other episodes where a lot of us got married, and some of us got divorced and married another Ojai person. Mm-hmm. So we're a very small group there. Right. But there's trust in that. Right. So back in the day, like families would say, "Oh, little Susie who lives on the acre next door, you know, she's yeah. the girl you want to marry." Yeah. And then the families knew each other and would get together. And then other people used to meet at church. Right. So what's happening now is the families aren't getting involved. Families are divided. Families are all over the place. People aren't going to church, so they're not meeting at church. So they're meeting in these very odd, disconnected ways. Right. And I do think it's actually extremely challenging and increasingly difficult for young people especially um, to find these connections with the right people because they're living for the most part in a virtual world. Right. They're talking to people over the internet. They're, you know, looking at their Instagram and thinking that they define this type of person, which is usually totally wrong. Right. So they're doing you know, and then they're connecting with people through all kinds of apps. Like, what is the what is the big dating app? I don't even know. Um, I'm so glad you don't know, <laughs> or that would be a big red flag. <laughs> no, but you hear, I do hear of it. I forget what it is. Uh, I don't even know. It's like a hookup thing. I don't know. Well, Tinder. Tinder. Okay. Yeah, t- maybe Tinder. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so it's yeah. That's how people are reading people, and they don't. They're not finding quality people, and of course they're not. That's not the right way to connect with somebody right. at all. And that's why I want to do another episode, a separate episode about dating, especially as a Catholic in this world, you know, how that how that is working because, you know, we we do need human interaction. You gotta like be face to face with somebody. You gotta see if you have a spark, first of all. Mm-hmm. And then you you do need to see if you have things in common. You need to see uh, definitely about the values. I know like one of my top five favorite things about you is that I know that you are Catholic. We have that in common. It's, you know, I feel really good and safe and secure with that. And I wouldn't want to be with anybody that's, that's not Catholic for me, that that wouldn't be working out. Yeah. You know, so it's like, we know, I know that you have the same values that I do, and you're not going to go off and be doing something that's against our faith you know, against our teachings. I, I don't want that. Right. So, you know, that's really important and valuable, but I think there's, I'm feeling actually super hopeful that again, this is shifting 
that there's going to be a trend, like the pendulum is swinging back. And that I think, you know, you know, when you try something, whatever it is, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, so this is working great. Like, oh, it's a success. So we're doing X, Y, Z, and it's working. Like, let's look at the Curtis family, Carolyn Curtis's family, okay? Mm. So she's doing these different things. And so far, so good. Okay, I'm not saying that something, you know, they're human and something might come up, but they're they're on a good track. So they're going to keep on that track mm. because it's working. When you have something, you know, that's that you're doing, whether it's in your family or your own personal thing, if, you know, let's say all you're eating is sugar. All you're doing is drinking alcohol, eating sugar, eating fried foods, not exercising, and you have high blood pressure and you have a heart attack and, you know, you're in the hospital. Well, that's not working. Right. So you got to switch what you're doing. Yeah. And I do wish, I'm going to disagree with you on one thing. I do wish that the pendulum was really fully swinging in another direction and, and, and society would take a right turn and change how things are working. I think it's more that there's going to be more division. There are going to be families like, well, not, yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, I think they're going to be. I was trying to be hopeful here. I know. No, I think it is hopeful. And I said, I hope that happens. And maybe I'm the pessimist here, but I do think that there's going to be more division. I think there will be families just like Carolyn's. And, and there's going to be people who have for sure conservative values and really value uh, Christ in their home and all that kind of stuff. But they're going to be divided and there's going to be more extreme people who really push into this, I don't know, woke liberal mentality. And it's just the way it is. And I just I see them not ever seeing eye to eye. Well, and you know what, what also, when you were just saying that, I was, I was thinking, remember just not that long ago, how people could, could, you could have your own type of family and people weren't always involved in your business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like you could have your family, whether it was traditional or not. And people honored that and people were like, okay, well, so they're different. So, you know, this is what they're doing. We're over here doing this. Nowadays, like with this Harrison Butker, okay? So he's saying, you know, this speech to the to his peers, to his group. Right. And he's, you know, encouraging them to have traditional families because that's what, what has, that's 2,000 years, that's been the plan, mm -hmm. okay? You know, this is what we were, this is what the doctrine is of the church, you know? Right. So the fact that he's getting trouble for it when it's like, how come he can't say that? How come he can't have a traditional family without people wanting him to get fired uh -huh. for saying what he said? Okay? Uh -huh. So it's really interesting that I, I get what you're saying. Like, it's we're already divided. Uh -huh. But I don't see why people can't just be in their own space. They can and they will. And that's what I'm saying. They're going to be like these pods of people like, you know, conservative people live in a certain area and there's a community of people who really, you know, have these values. And then there's this extreme group of people who have taken over, you know, part of the city like Portland where they have no laws in the, the certain area. It's just, it's a free for all, you know, it's just, I think it's going to be more of that kind of stuff. It's a little, for me, it's, it's a depressing to think about, but I, that's what I see happening. Right. I can't deny that. Right. Anyway, I don't want to leave on that downer note. That's a completely downer note. I know. It is. Okay. So so the hope in all of that would be that you find your community of people and get more people to join in that community. You know, just like we're trying to get more people to bring more people to the faith. Well, yes, and and I I also feel like I think when I say there's like I feel like women are being told the wrong thing or getting the wrong ideas. And, and who's telling them these things? I'm not quite sure. But I just wish women would feel good and confident in themselves. And if you feel good and confident in yourself, then you're going to give off that vibe to people where it's like not in a prideful, 
haughty way, but in a way of like, I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm feeling like, you know, I, I can love somebody. I can be nurturing to a family. I can be a good partner. I can be, you know, worthwhile in my family. Like, again, I, I'm really encouraging people to try to get back to this. When I say traditional family, again, the goal is parents living in the same house. They have children. But then within your own home, figure out what your roles are as far as who, who can do what to contribute to the family. It might even be the children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, little Johnny loves to cook. Mm -hmm. Let's have little Johnny cook three times a week mm -hmm. if he wants to do that. I used to clean my house. <laughs> Shocker. I used to clean my house when I was a little girl. My mom hates to clean. Yeah. I love to clean. It's like, mom, let me clean. <laughs> so, you know, let everybody have their roles mm -hmm. in the house. Mm -hmm. Have your traditional family. Right. Be strong in it. Because, you know, these these people are finding themselves not not connected. They're not matching up. They're, they're having children late or not at all or by themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we don't even know how that's going to end up working out later. It hasn't been going on long enough. And I don't think it's going to work out very well. Yeah. I mean, I think all of these really interesting, aberrant things that have come up in society that you have mentioned a few of them and how traditional roles are being questioned and, and breaking away and going to these extremes. There's already studies being done on certain groups of people who have made certain decisions, whether it's modifying their bodies or what have you, that it's extremely damaging to them mentally and they suffer for it, you know, later on. And so time will tell. Yeah. And, and I do think we need to really value each other for what, what we are, you know, like I value so many things about you as my husband, as a man. I think you value me as a woman, as a, as a wife, as a mother. I think, you know, we value each other with those things. I think everybody's so self-centered about themselves. Yeah. And instead of saying, gosh, you know, I really do like, I really do need a a partner yeah. in my life yeah. and I need a balance. There's certain things that you just are good at, naturally good at, and you're helpful and vice versa. Yeah. And that's why God made us the way he did to be right. complimentary and helpful to exactly. each other. And so I think that's the thing is let's embrace our differences. Let's be good partners. Let's be good that our family is helpful to each other and nurturing to each other and taking care of each other so that when we go out into the world, we can bring value to the world. Uh -huh. If we're just constantly thinking about ourselves and living on our own and then whining and complaining and, and being upset when we don't have somebody to lead our life with, well, that's because you put yourself in this isolation booth. Right. Yeah. And we're not meant to do that. That's not what God's plan was. Mm -hmm. And every time we go against God's plan, it really messes stuff up. It's like, it's, it's phenomenal to me. So that's how I would like to end this episode is encouraging people to look at the, look at the beauty of other people, look at the value of other people. Look, look out from yourself. Mm -hmm. Quit looking at yourself and right. look out from yourself yeah. and say, instead of saying, what can you do for me? What can I do for you? Yeah. And I, and I know that quote from Matthew Kelly, he uses a lot, be the best version of yourself. And I think the way that you can find that is to really meditate on what you think God wants you to be, what kind of person that he would want you to be. Right. In every aspect. Right. And he doesn't want you to be selfish. I can promise you that. Mm -hmm. He wants you to be of service to others. He wants you to be to when we say, oh, I love you, man. I love you. Well, love is willing the good of the other. Mm -hmm. So it's again, don't focus on yourself. Focus outward. You'll draw more people to you. You know, like in, in a good way. And 
try to give people a chance. Try to find how you can all work together. We're all like trying, to, everybody's pushing everybody away. Let's draw people in. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds easy. Okay, <laughs> go do that, everybody. <laughs> Okay, so more coming on these subjects because I think this requires a longer talk about these things because I'm worried for everybody. I want everybody to be, you know, feeling good and secure and loved and, and valued. So to be continued. Thank you. Love you. Bye. Thank you for joining me today. Now go out and be a bright light in someone's life. And remember, be focused be faithful, and be fresh. Fresh Catholic is produced, edited, and recorded in Ventura, California.